So hello, everybody. It is me, Demetra K, and I am sitting here with Donovan, the recovering Democrat Sadiq, also known as a Black Yule Brenner. <laughs> I look like a milk dud today, don't you? But anyway, <laughs> we are not live. I should say that at the top of the hour, but um, I will. I'm not sure if Donovan will be back, but I will be back live today at 5 p.m. Central Time, where we understand that the National Jur uh, Association of Black Journalists will be interviewing Kamala Harris. So I want to watch it and bring back what I discovered. So in the meantime, if you guys get a chance to check it out, y'all should do so as well. But uh, the purpose of the Demetri K show is to promote black love, knowledge, and understanding of all things that go on in the black community to make us an even better people with the emphasis on even because we're great people, but we can always try to do better. Today, we're going to talk about the unfortunate situation of Sean P. Diddy, Puff Daddy, Love, Brother Love, Combs, and that he was um, indicted last night or actually was arrested yesterday and indicted this morning in uh, New York uh, state court on uh, RICO charges. I'm going to break that down for you. And so we're going to have this conversation right off the top. But I want to say this before I give it to Donovan, as uh, the great honorable minister Louis Farrakhan uh, has always said, and has said, and I've seen this trending a lot. Don't laugh, learn. Donovan. Hey, you guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Again, we are not live right now, but Please tune in uh, later on today at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for the Demetra K show as she will be live and I should be back. I'm going to do my VA thing. Uh, we uh, should be back and she's going to be talking about those topics that come up. But do us a favor. We have a banner at the bottom. If you want to contribute to the show, as a lot of you guys have, we thank you so much. Every little bit helps. It keeps the content creator motivated to keep these great conversations going. And again, it's up. It's you guys that make the show what it is, because I could talk to Dimitri anytime by picking up the phone and doing that. And the way that you guys can do that is uh, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, Cash Check, Money Order. We, uh, we, we do it all. And again, it does take time and effort to make these great videos. Also, don't forget to download the African Diaspora News Channel app. You can get that on Google Play and the Apple Store. Great way to keep up with what's going on all around the world with the African diaspora. If you care about it, if you don't care about it, the, the fact of the matter is you, we need to be aware of what is happening to our people, our ancestors, our descendants, our cousins, our brothers, our sisters, all over the world, so that when that situation happens here, we're aware ahead of time. And uh, great videos, additional great videos from Dimitri K, Phil Scott, Vicki Dillard, and all the rest of the great contributors to the African diaspora news channel. Google Play, Apple Store, check it out. Thank you so much, Donovan, for that. And I should say I appreciate you, too, for, you know, uh, continuously bringing up the African Diaspora News Channel app because it's important that we get on our own platforms instead of being dependent upon everybody else's platform that we really are not free to say um, what we want to say all like that. But anyway, uh, as I was saying, uh, Sean P. Diddy uh, Combs, I think he's known as Brother Love now, but I don't know. But most people know him as Puff Daddy, right? Um, yesterday he was arrested. Sounds like in the in the cover of night, right? Um, my phone began to go off. And different people was texting me and stuff. I was asleep. I was like, I have to get into that in the morning. Uh, anyway, so he was arrested last night and indicted this morning. And I want to read to you a synopsis, basically, of what happened. So it says Sean Diddy Combs has been indicted on charges of sex trafficking, racketeering, and related offenses. Following a federal investigation, the indictment alleges that Combs starting. Uh, as early as 2008, was involved in a pattern of coercing and manipulating women into participating in sexual activities, including through drug use, intimidation, and promises of career advancement. He is also accused of organizing freak-offs, quote-unquote, parties, um, where elaborate uh, sexual performances took place, often involving both uh, men and, um, I'm sorry, women and male sex workers. Those acts were allegedly recorded without the victim's knowledge and used as leverage to ensure their silence. The charges stem from allegations of abuse, kidnapping, forced labor, and obstruction of justice, and detailed uh, details uh, incidents of violence and coercion against women, some of uh, which were captured on video. These serious accusations have led to Combs' arrest, and he faces up to 20 years in prison if he is convicted. Okay? So I just want to break down some things. Some people might want to know what is RICO. Uh, so it's R-I-C-O. 
and it stands for Racketeer Influence and Corruption Organization. It also goes on to say it in, uh, refers to a set of federal laws under Title 18 of the U.S. Code, specifically designed to combat organized crime. Passed in 1970, the RICO Act allows for the pros prosecution of individuals involved in an ongoing criminal enterprise, even if they did not personally commit the crimes. So basically, and then it also says it could be brought against, okay, this is important too. RICO charges can be brought against individuals or organizations engaged in a pattern of racketeering and, and, uh, activities, which can include offenses like bribery, fraud, extortion, money laundering, and in many cases, violent crimes such as murder or kidnapping. A key aspect of RICO is that it enables law enforcement to target the leaders of the criminal organization for the crimes committed by their subordinates. It says the law is often used to dismantle crime I mean, so our criminal enterprises such as mafia organizations, gangs, and more recently, corporate entities involved in systematic criminal behavior. Okay, now with all of that, I read the 14-page indictment that has been released uh, from the federal court there against that of uh, Diddy, if you will. Um, and there's a lot going on in there. There's a lot, uh, of course, all the things that I just read he's accused of. Now, they're calling his uh, bad boy production. There's a whole bunch of other things listed as well. All of his, his names that he goes by, that he's gone by. They're kind of considering that to be a criminal, uh, a crime syndicate, if you will, because uh, all the things that he is accused of doing to people, um, he did that under the umbrella of bad boy um, and some other things. I was also said, uh, <clears throat> they talked about the things that he has, like his music career, his clothing, his alcohol uh, ventures, and just a whole host of other things that he has. Now, at the end of that indictment, uh, oh, yes, it talked about that they are going to be going after his assets, um, whether it's real estate, securities, money, anything that he has amassed from 2008 until present day. Now, it also uh, mentioned something like bribery, because it said, I think he's, uh, even as of last year, or beginning of this year, one of the two, that he was trying to bribe witnesses, trying to pay them off and say, hey, basically, I'm paraphrasing, don't talk or cooperate with the federal investigation and I'll give you some money or whatever. But I should take this back to November of last year. I remember I was, I was in a store, I was shopping and my sister was blowing my phone up. She was ringing my phone and blowing my phone up. I'm like, what? And she says, you know, uh, Cassie, Cassie Ventura, who was Diddy's longtime girlfriend, um, she dropped the lawsuit on him, basically alleging all of the things that I had said. Um, and so, of course, that spurred a lot of conversation about whether he did it and this, that, and the other. Now, she was seeking uh, unspecified uh, amounts of money for the damages that he caused her. But it sounds like Diddy was like, nah, I ain't paying and get out of here, scat. Well, uh, not even 24 hours later, he did settle with Cassie for, you know, what he was accused of doing. But unfortunately, from that point, the floodgates were open and everybody you can think of that he had to work with, um, worked around him and anything else you can think of came out as different people uh, following copious amounts of uh, civil suits. None of these were criminal up until now. They were civil suits uh, talking about kind of the same things, right? It was a man. Uh, I forget the brother's name. I think his last name is Jones. But he uh, filed a, a case saying that he was also treated the way Cassie was treated and he was suing. Um, as well. So uh, the different members, uh, Danity Kane, um, uh, one of the uh, members, Don, she's suing, saying that he's done some pretty, you know, heinous things to her as well. Uh, Aubrey of Danity Kane, uh, members of Day Six, I heard that uh, they said they he they only made about 15 bucks uh, when it was all said and done from uh, their album that did very well. So we could go back to Craig Mack, uh, Black Rise. There's just so many of his artists who have a story to tell about him. And so here we are, and Diddy is looking at doing a lot of time. Now, I think people should also keep in mind, this is just New York, but he's been here around for a while. So other cities and states can bring charges up against uh, that of Diddy like they did with R. Kelly. So this is unfolding. Also, before I give it to Donovan, the indictment uh, did talk about other people. It didn't say who, it said associates, business associates and things like that, they were also complicit. And so I watched a short, a short snippet of a press conference with uh, Damon Williams. He is representing Manhattan, U.S. Um, he's, uh, in Manhattan, New York. He's actually the one, I guess, is um, facilitating the charges for now. Uh, so he says, yeah, this is ongoing. Because they were, he was asked, are there more names to drop? He says, this is an ongoing um, investigation. And I should also say, too, that around the internet, 
this is why I said don't laugh. Learn uh, from that of the Honorable uh, Minister Louis Farrakhan is because you see a lot of people talking about that they found a thousand bottles of baby oil and lubricants uh, in his um, house. I uh, forget which one. Maybe it was L.A. I think it was, along with, you know, some guns and things like that. Uh, and so I'm like, y'all focusing on the wrong stuff, you know. There are victims who are fell prey to Diddy, and that needs to be the most important thing. I think you can really kind of ascertain what everything else is for. You know, it's like, are you are you slow? You know what the baby oil was for. Anyway, Donovan. Yeah, you know, um, it's 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 really easy. You took a lot of my talking points as well, which is great. But I think if you're paying attention, I'm paying attention. Everybody's paying attention out there. But it's 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 easy to make light of these charges. But it, you know, isn't it funny how we forget about the victims? And this is some serious stuff. These allegations of people here in Hollywood. I'm I live in California, 60, 70 miles outside of Hollywood, and these allegations is nothing new. We've heard about these rituals and these things that people will do for fame and stuff. But these are real actual victims, women that are being uh, assaulted and sexually uh, gratified to powerful men and women in Hollywood. Some of the biggest donors of in the Democratic Party that we know of that have been arrested in past and stuff like that have been uh, people that are caught up in these type of situations. I'm very sure both parties do it. But um, so let's not forget the victims in this. But you brought up a lot of great points, and I think I caught a few. I want you guys, as I'm speaking on this, I want you guys to think of a situation where a man was murdered in jail under guard and under video surveillance. His name is Jeffrey Epstein, and he had names of people that if you really look at the case, it's similar to what uh, the diddler did. And I'm saying diddler for P. Diddy. What the diddler did where he had parties and stuff and he would record guests coming in there and probably in compromising positions. Prince Philip was one of them. The Clinton, uh, Bill Clinton was caught up in that. All sorts of stuff is going on in the entertainment industry. So this man ended up mysteriously passing away and the names were uh, redacted and never really released, you know, high profile names that would have been on that. Um, under this um, prosecutor, this, the uh, attorney, federal attorney, so far, as, you, as, as you've already said, uh, Demetra, they are charging him under RICO. RICO is a criminal organization in regards to this. I was watching KTLA here in, in uh, California as he was reading the indictment or whatever, uh, it, whatever else it was. And he, out of his own mouth, said that the diddler did not do this by himself. These are horrific crimes and he did not do this by himself. Demetra, I have a question for you. There is another man sitting in a jail. I believe they're, either it's in New York right now or he's in Chicago. He is functional, functionally illiterate, cannot read. He was charged under the Biden-Harris administration's DOJ under the RICO statute. His name is R. Kelly. Now, I'm not here to say anything. What I'm trying to get you guys to understand is um, they apply these charges to something. If this man says RICO is an organizational thing, if you like R. Kelly or not, this man is sitting in jail by himself. He could not have done what he is alleged to have done by himself, and he's sitting there by himself. So I want you guys to think about that. I also want you guys to think about this. In a capitalistic system, capitalism in its purest form, it's the strong survive. You're going to do whatever you can to dominate your competition. Demetria, if you had an opportunity to get rid of your competition with no other competition, you would control the market. Am I, am I correct? It is alleged that Sean, uh, Sean Carter might have dropped some little tidbits because, you know, these people know what's going on in the entertainment world. Would have done. It's alleged. Like I said, that that's one of the things that, that that is out there that maybe Sean Carter dropped dime or some people in the industry dropped dime on Diddy to eradicate that blueprint. OK, that competition. Another thing I want to bring up, as I just gave you guys the information in regards to the Jeffrey Epstein uh, situation. How many of you guys remember a, uh, a little known label, Murder, Inc.? 
Irv Gotti. Justice Department went after him. He, he beat the charges, but how much money did he spend to have to defend himself in doing this? And it was alleged that there was money laundering going on, blah, 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 blah. It's amazing how it seems all of these things are going on under the black record labels. And I'm not trying to defend anybody. That ain't what I'm saying. I want you guys to, to, to use your basic logic here. We know, um, what's his name? The head of Arista, uh, Clive Davis, and all these guys do shysty things, you know, and they, they, they cheat their artists and all kinds of, they drop the artists and do all this other stuff, but no charges ever, ever happen. And if they do happen, they're paid off and they go away. Another, another thing that I have to, to bring out is under the bad boy label, name me a bad boy artist that went on to be multimillionaires. Billionaire. It's always some money, but nobody ever really made any money out of that. And in this case, Cassie's incident at the hotel, it is also alleged that the reason why that videotape took so long to come out is because in practice, allegedly, Diddy paid that staff to not release the videotape and whatever, whatever. And then it came out, what, two, what, years later. And we all saw for ourselves the allegations Cassie made, which was almost spot on in her complaint to what we saw in that video. So um, where there's smoke, there's fire. But again, let's not forget the victims in these cases. Yeah, there, there's a lot going on, and you know, as far I, I didn't, I never heard that angle. As far as you know, Jay Z uh, may have dropping dime. Um, uh, I, 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 I want well, Jay Z and people in the, in the in the industry, just yeah, things like yeah, that. Jay -Z. I, I never heard that. Um, I did. I see, I've seen Fifty Cent try to bring up 50, uh, Jay Z and like, why are you so quiet? Like, you got some stories to tell as well, as far as being complicit with Diddy. But uh, as of this moment. Nobody else has been named in that. And yes, the um, district attorney there in New York, uh, he was asked about the Jeffrey Epstein connection. And he says, well, you know, he wasn't trying to really get, get into it, but he's like, nah, I'm not going to get into any of that, you know, type of thing. Because um, they were asking about the safety of Diddy in, in custody. And he says, well, that's not my job, but, you know, that's the job once he gets on the other side is to ensure his safety. He says, as they would with any inmate, of course, we know he's probably in Rikers Island. So it's like, yeah, right. I don't know, you know, but nevertheless, um, I just say this. It's not a secret that Diddy has been at the forefront of being accused rather of some pretty devastating things, you know? Um, and the DA also said that this is a case of, you know, basically Diddy, uh, if he couldn't get his way, he was going to do whatever he needed to do to get his way, whether it was through coercion, violence. Uh, they said, you know, there's a lot of people that were uncomfortable with coming forward. And I've had this conversation with people and I hate this question. And I'm not saying it's not a valid question, but I personally hate it. Well, why now? I hate that question. And I hate that question simply because if you're not in the shoes of the people who have that story to tell them, first of all, thank God you don't have that story to tell. But if you're not in the shoes of those people of uh, now coming forward to tell their story, then you don't, you should really be quiet. Because unless you know what it is to be in, uh, threatened, your family threatened, uh, you know, uh, drugged and a whole bunch of stuff. And, you know, they said that he, the guns were there and they were defaced, by the way. It sounded like serial numbers are scrubbed off of them. But uh, it's also said that he had armed security guards. So there was a lot of muscle around Diddy for people not to talk or to be afraid of talking. The other thing people need to realize is, and listen, I'm going to say he's innocent until proven guilty, although we've seen some things like the tape of the CNN, which, you know, why did they release that after all these years? But anyway, the one of him um, beating down that of Cassie Ventura, you know, I want to say that uh, he's innocent until proven guilty, but, uh, you know, it's not looking good for Diddy. At the end of the day, I'm going to say this, you got to pay for what you do. I don't care who you are. I don't care what you have done. You're going to pay for what you did. I don't care how much money you think you have. There's not enough money to absolve you. So like, 
yeah, you may get away from man, but you're not going to get away from God or karma, whatever system you believe in. And a lot of people, for whatever reason, think that they will. And that's what happened with Diddy. Diddy thought all these years, all these people coming forward, talking about them cheating them, doing uh, horrible things to him. He thought, oh, well, I'm not gonna... even to the day that Cassie and her lawyer came to his doorstep and said, we got you, sucker. He's, well, I'm not going to, you know, I'm sure he was very cavalier. He's a megalomaniac, right? That's how he thinks, he, oh, you know, I'm this big giant superstar and I can do whatever I want to a point because eventually you're going to get that at that door and you're going to have to answer for it whether you want to or not. See, there's not enough money for him to, to get out of what he did. Now, do I believe that there's other people on those tapes because they got tapes, okay? And because I was having a conversation about it earlier, I'm like, listen, the feds did not run up in Diddy's house on a whim, on all speculation. They ran up in there, and once they got up in there and they got what there was to get this, and we got enough to bring this man in on charges. So, you know, eventually you're going to have to answer to for that. But as far as the connection between him and all the radio, uh, radio uh, because there's white, they, 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 the white record labels are the OG of shaking people down. They've been doing it since that of, if you will, Cadillac Records actually is a good movie to watch and it really highlights that. So the white record labels, which is, is speculated and it's been a re very well documented. I've been following this of Sam Cooke as to why he's not here. That's why there's a documentary on uh, Netflix, The Two Killings of Sam Cooke is one of my favorite documentaries. They call it Two Killings because they said he died by one way but then they said, did it die another way? So I bring up Sam Cooke to say that Sam Cooke was starting a record label. He's like, I want to be black owned. I want to do for my people because I know my people getting, you know, screwed over by these white record labels. And they're speculating to as that's why he may not be here. In addition to it, I want to bring in the mafia. Payola, right? The mafia is very connected with Payola where they say, hey, play this record. Or else, or you know, they'll offer um, you know, payment or something. So I just want to really make drive that point that the while it's not okay that the black record labels and young thug Jeffrey Williams, he's also on trial for Rico in Georgia. Um, one of the most expensive trials uh in Georgia history, mind you. But just because the white ones are doing it, the black ones should know better because your skin it does not protect you from what's to come. So I would think from what the stuff that they're saying about Diddy, I don't want to say it's worse. It's that we know of. Because like I said, the other record companies, they've been doing it to people for years. And guess what? They're going to keep doing it. And guess what? They're going to keep not getting caught. Because you know why? We, unfortunately, don't know how to shut the hell up. We go above and beyond. I'm not saying they don't. But they keep their stuff tightly wrapped up, right? Now, does he have some of those people on, on video? I would imagine he does. Will they ever get disclosed? Probably not, unless he discloses them. It remains to be seen. You know, uh, again, um, I'm not surprised at, at this at all, Demetra. And I want, I, I'm going to say, I'm going to tell you exactly why. Cat Williams said 2024 is the year of truth. Things will be revealed. And we're seeing it. You know, we're seeing it in real time how this stuff is, 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 is going out here. Millions of dollars are missing. I mean, and I'm not defending anybody, but here, here's what I want you to think about. You worked hard, whatever, R. Kelly, whoever, you, whatever entertainment entity it is or celebrity it is. Do you guys know how much, and I, I'm glad that you prefaced the show by saying that everybody is innocent until proven guilty. That is a fact. You have to, it's not like you say, Demetra. Demetra loves to say this, you guys. It ain't what you know, it's what you can prove. Simple as that. It's what you can prove. And it takes a lot of, and unfortunately, when you're a black person in this justice system, you have to, you're guilty until you can prove your innocence. And you guys all, a lot of you guys will agree with me. That is pretty much how it is in the justice system in America for black people. You are guilty until you can prove your innocence. And to prove your innocence, you have to have a lot of money. That is why a lot of people in our community, because we lack the funds, we will get with a public defender and a public defender will, will plead you out 
Well, it's only three years. It's only two years. How many of you guys seen the movie A Few Good Men? What did Tom Cruise want to do? Hey, yeah, you're going to be dishonorably discharged. You're going to be thrown out, disgraced and stuff. But hey, you'll be free in two years. You'll be free in three years. But a dishonorable discharge from the military is worse than being a felon. A lot of people don't know that. But Tom Cruise was willing to plead that. And that's what happened to us in the justice system. So this government, be it Republican or Democrat, in my opinion, when they see celebrities of a certain caliber that will not get in line or whatever their situation or they're getting too much stuff, I don't know what it is Diddy has on those tapes that somebody wants or needs to get. They're going to bleed him out financially. Like you said, they're going to go and take his assets under a RICO charge. Let's talk about Michael Jackson. They wanted those masters that he had and that uh, publishing book so badly, they tied this man up in frivolous lawsuits. And I'm not defending anything because I don't really know the cases, but I'm using my basic logic, Demetra, and I'm saying this does not make sense because it seems to me it happens to black artists. And I'm not trying to make this a black and white thing. I'm just saying it just doesn't make sense how all of these judges and these uh, public officials, the problem of the migrant crisis is going to black mayors. The problem of uh, mayors in the United States, be it uh, Fannie Willis, DAs, and people being charged under the crimes. When and it, when you don't see that type of per, uh, pursuit going after other groups and their crimes right here in L.A., you had a uh, city council member that basically was uh, speaking hate crimes against a fellow member and the black community. And they refused to step down and there's no charges to them and all this other stuff. So in the year of truth. I want you guys to remember this. I don't care if you got an R by your name or if you got a D by your name. We all we got. I'm not saying support them and let the chips fall where they lie. But there is a reason they are going after this man right now. There is something that he has. Because remember, all through the 90s, they're propping this man up and put him in that position. Only to tear him only to be torn down. We saw what we saw and to, to do what they're doing. So it's going to be interesting. The year of truth, Cat Williams, brother, you, you hit it right, right on the nail. He, he told what is actually happening. Yeah, the Cat Williams definitely um, <clears throat> seems to be a prophet. But I want to also say that they didn't prop him up there. Did he propped himself up there? You know, thinking he can, as Martin says, stomp with the big dog. And when I say stomping with the big dogs, you're stomping with people that don't look like you. And I would venture to say he probably learned that behavior from them. I'm sure, you know, he's seen some things. Now, something tells me that Diddy was probably always a horrible person uh, for whatever reason. I don't think, I mean, I guess you could, but I, I just don't think that he woke up saying one day, you know what? I'm going to be a terrible person. I'm going to be like, you know, Vlad the Vampire. I'm going to be out here. I don't think he, I think he was probably all, you know, because some people are, they raised like that or, you know, they, they just been that way their whole life. But yeah, he put himself into the position uh, to get what he's got. And even when after our Kelly was going through, when he was going through, it sounds like Diddy was still doing some pretty jacked up stuff. So it's like, at what point did you not look at R. Kelly and say, okay, I've been doing some strange things with my change. And I might want to either get me a passport to Bali or somewhere, you know what I mean? Sit down. So he couldn't do it. But my thing is, I don't know. If I was in Diddy's shoes and I knew I did all those things to people, I would have anticipated those things coming back to me. So when Cassie came, because I believe she was the catalyst of all of this. When she came and she says, oh, boo. I'm going to need a hundred milli from you when you wanted the cash, you want to cash, pennies, check, cash. You know, that's what I would have said. Right. And then it would have went away. She would have signed a non-disclosure agreement and it would all went away. I'm thinking, you know, maybe, maybe not, but he was, he was very cavalier in how he moved with her. So, you know, this is the other thing. 
you ain't supposed to be in, 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 in engaging in any in everything. I want to talk about these freak offs for just a second. Now, the freak offs are just what you think they are. They said these parties sometimes lasted for days. And in fact, they said that he would uh, often administer IVs, I don't know, fluids, vitamins, whatever it is to the, the party goers and some of the people who didn't want to go to the party, including himself, to rejuvenate themselves after the, uh, the all those days of, you know, the, the acts and, and drugging and all that other stuff. That's in the indictment as well. So, you know, when people tell you, hey, let's go over here. See, I'm, I'm, I always tell you, I ain't never been one to be, uh, been down to, uh, to peer pressure at all. I'm like, y'all want to do what? I tell you all the time the story about when they want to go play high and go get it. It's like, I'm sorry, I'm not going to be doing that with you. I might perpetrate, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Bam, I'm in the house with my mama. Later on the next day, they be like, where were you? Is you crazy? Because I heard some horror stories. See, I was one of those people I learned early in life. There's, I just didn't like being in trouble. I didn't like whoopings. I, I didn't like none of that. I, I, out of all my siblings, I, I think, or my little brother, I, I was the only one that spanked him. He's like 10 years younger than me. But out of my other siblings, I was the one that got whooped the least. Because I was like, okay, you ain't got to be doing that to me no more. I get it. I learned my lesson. So just because you can don't mean you should. Now, guess what? All those people that were at these freak-offs, you know what they're sitting at home today thinking? And they were thinking that when Cassie got to talking, right? When am I going to get that? Or, because like you said, Donovan, I think you made a good point with the Jeffrey F.C. and stuff. They redacted those names. But are they going to redact, are they gonna redact the names that was in Diddy's thing? Because more than likely, most of those names that were in Diddy's thing look like us, right? Now, we know the system ain't about protecting black people. Now, I believe there were some other people, you know, they even said D.D. Drakes was there, a couple of them. Like, why? You a big old pastor. Like, what are you doing? But those people are now, got. they probably calling a travel agent. Um, Is Valley a good place to be this time of year? Because, you know, they don't have an extradition process. You get, That's why Russell Simmons is over there, because they was gunning for him, too. Now, I don't want to, if he did the stuff, he should answer for it. But if he didn't. Whatever, I think he was smart either way to be like, yeah, United States, I'm blowing this joint. I mean, it, it's it's uh, interesting, and I, and I don't think uh, this stuff is going to stop. And uh, I'm just saying, it recently within the last four years, I think it is very strange how the Biden Harris administration has gone after influential black people in the black community. It it just seems that there's more black people being indicted under this administration, DOJ, than I've ever seen before in any other administration, DOJ. I'm not saying these people are innocent. That ain't what I'm saying. We're all going for justice, all that other great stuff. But it's amazing to me how this administration could say, oh, we're going to uh, tax cash app and all these other things if you make over $600. You know what I mean? It's just how they're doing things for people who are just trying to live in the United States and, you know, taking out these servants, public servants and leaders. And all of a sudden, all these migrants come over and flood the, you know, there, there's just something to this that it just doesn't make sense to me where I'm kind of saying, wait a minute. If you knock out all of the servitude in the black community and replace it with another group, what voice are we going to have in this country? You know, and it's it, it's just amazing. After the fact, I'm very sure a lot of these victims have been victims for a very long time. And the, the, the State Department, they've known all of this stuff. And again, we know when it comes to the federal government, it does take a while before charges. You know, that's why they have a 90 something, 96 percent conviction rate on, on the federal level. I mean, they're up there. I mean, if they're going to come at you, they're going to come at you. So what this happened last year with Diddy when they raided his properties and stuff like that, it took a, a, a little bit. Yeah, they're not going to they're not going to indict anybody unless they know they have a case, unless they have a case. And here we are today and there's going to be people that are going to defend Diddy. I don't know why you would defend somebody that you don't even know personally. I don't know why you would do that. It's OK to have an opinion. You know, and, and that's great. But like I said, I don't know. I'm going to assume he's innocent until proven guilty. I do know this. 
I saw the tape of uh, Cassie Ventura and him kicking the shit out of her. I do know that. So that kind of influences my my thought process that more than likely these allegations might be true, but I don't know. Um, I got a question for you, Demetri. Do, do you think that he might do a plea deal if something goes down? I mean, I just look to it. It looks like uh, in addition to the 20 years, he, you know, for some of the RICO charges, he could be doing life. Um, I think if he's smart, um, of course, you know, did he beat a case once before, you know, with that of shine, <laughs> you know, he beat a case before. So I don't know. Maybe he's going to roll the dice. But I think uh, right now there's just so much evidence out there. Clearly, I mean, everybody's seen that uh, video of him beating up Cassie uh, there at the hotel in Los Angeles. So I don't know I, if I was him. I mean, sure. Okay, you think about the nature of somebody like Diddy. He's a billionaire. He's got uh, access to any and everything that his heart can desire 20 times over, right? But so you think about him having to go to prison. Now, he ain't going to jail. He's going to prison, you know, for a very long time. So somebody like him and his thought process, being a megalomaniac and all of that, who's going to check me? He might plead not guilty and and roll the dice with a jury trial. I wouldn't. I wouldn't. There's just too many people to come forward. You know, it ain't no telling. It, like you said, if the feds got you, they probably got you. You know, so I don't know. But what does a plea deal even look like? You know, does he have a, uh, no pun intended, a trump card somewhere that says, hey, yeah. You know, y'all can indict me and have me go to trial, but bam, here goes such and such and such and such. Oh, they was there too. You know, like dignitaries or what? I don't know. I would. I don't know. It, it, it's just going to be, it, I think it's going to be one to watch, but I, no, I don't think he's going to uh, take a plea. I, I don't, I don't right. think. Or, or if you think about that, you brought up a good point. What if um, Trump gets in there and he rolls the dice, gives a big donation to, you know, whatever party it is, next thing you know. He gets pardoned as somebody's walking out the door. I mean, and he's in, he, they're, they're trying him on a federal level. So he could, you know, if he got in there. But to your other point, you know, Diddy was voter die, voter die, big time Democrat, big time Democrat, you know. Uh, where they at? You know, and I'm not saying they should absolve him of, you know, that kind of stuff. I don't, I, I, I've are always known and thought that Diddy was a terrible person for a long time. I didn't need this, you know, Cassie or the indictment or anything to tell me that. I mean, if you've been paying attention to all of his artists before, it's like, okay, I could get one or two disgruntled uh, artists, but all of them? Come on. You know, and the, and the part that makes me mad is the people that's defending Diddy. Oh, they just trying to, oh, they are wide now, this, that, and the other. Like I said, you ain't never been a victim of that type of crime. You can never ask why now. You know, you afraid for your life. This fool allegedly blowing up cars and all kind of stuff. Yeah, I think I'd be quiet too. You know, and he did that um, because he's also charged with arson. Now, I didn't say what the arson was, but if you were reading uh, Cassie's, uh, uh, you know, his lawsuit, she said that he threatened Kid Cuddy because they were, not Cassie and weren't talking, talking, but they were, you know, I guess they're going to do something in the studio. And he threatened Kid Cuddy, said, if you don't stay away from her, I'm going to blow your car up. And it said a week later or so, the car was blown up in his driveway. So, yeah, you're going to shut your mouth because you don't know what kind of fool this is. You have an idea, but you don't know to what extent he's going to take it. So we're not going to be here long. I'm going to give Donovan the last closing word. I just want to say this, okay? As the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan said, don't laugh, learn. Because there's some people out there that's probably doing something, maybe not as bad, but close to it, you know, uh, or thinking about doing it. And the other thing that I really love is there before the grace of God, there go I. That means, thank you know, I'm glad that it ain't me, you know, because it could be you. Think of some of the things that you've done. And I'm not trying to guilt you, but I'm saying if we're thinking this is funny, uh-huh, the baby oil and all that, if we think that stuff is funny, you be careful. That there's something like this or something, you know, like it, maybe not to that degree, but whatever it is you've done and nobody else knows that you've done it, but you and the other person or whatever it is, you better hope and pray that it never comes back to visit you. And the other thing is too, Diddy, we know about his transgressions because he is, see, that's the other thing. My little brother always said, along with fame comes the blame. So you're getting all the fame and all the glory and the accolades, but with that too, 
Why you out there in the public? The stuff that you do behind closed doors, oh yeah, yeah, that's coming to the forefront too. Everybody just like they was dancing with you. As uh, uh, Suge Knight, I think it was, says you, you, you're tired of your producer dancing with you in the videos and stuff. Yeah, why you out there dancing in the videos and stuff? Now everybody getting to watch that and again to watch the shame, the shame of what you did that is undeniable. And just like Diddy, we all got to answer to somebody. We all got to pay the piper eventually so put good out there into the world instead of bad because with all that fame and fortune and talent that diddy had he could have chosen to be a good person to actually help the people that trusted and believed in him he could have helped further their career he could have helped them tremendously and he could have been wealthier a thousand times over but he chose to be a the 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 now i won't call him the devil that's a step too far because we know who that is but he chose to be a demon and look what he got for it in return all, all money ain't good money, you know, and, and it's it, it just seems like it's kind of prevalent when it comes to this record industry. And I'm not down in the record because I love music. Everybody knows I have a lot of digital albums and stuff like that, over 2000 digital albums, full albums. I love the music industry, but I also noticed in the 90s when uh, you had LaFace records, you had Perspective, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, you had Bad Boy, you had all these black label prints. Where are they today? Where are these label prints today? Yeah, I get it. Sometimes you just want to fold the, the label, take your money and go. And that's great. But whenever I think of uh, this thing that goes on in the record industry, I think of Guy and Teddy Riley. I want, guys, I want you guys to think about Teddy Riley for a minute. Guy breaks up and of course they get back together, whatever, you know, off and on, off and on. But they're not like an official stable group. Then Teddy says, oh, it was Gene Griffith and all this other stuff, however the story was with that. Then Teddy forms a group called Blackstreet. Look at the, the stuff, the, the turmoil that goes on in this thing. So I think that is something prevalent in, in the industry that does that. But when I listen to Teddy in interviews, it's never him. The problem is never with him, but he, you're the producer, you're the the, the, the writer, you own the publishing, it, 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 all these things. And I'm just like, wow. And all these great groups break up and, you know, and it's all over money and things of that. And like I said, Guy would have gone on to be a, a super group. How many albums did, did they release? Only two. Only two. Look at the group's total. How many albums did they release? Only two. 112. These are all under the bad boy moniker. How many albums did they release? 112, I think, released five albums. But are they millionaire and billionaires? No. Craig Mack, under the Bad Boy label, how many albums did he release? Only two. I mean, we can just go down and down and down, down, you know, the, the line. So, um, innocent until proven guilty. The uh, Some of the tainted evidence to taint the, the jury pool has already been put out there in the video of him beating the crap out of Cassie. Uh, but what the energy that you put out there, it definitely does come back. Dimitri, I'm going to say this. I have never, ever got an ass whipping from my parents that I didn't earn. And I know that. And that's one of the things that my mom feared about me as a, a young man, because I was willing to take the ass whipping. You know, if my mom said being at 10 o'clock, it's 10.01, my mind said, well, I might as well stay out as long as I can because the ass whipping ain't going to be any different from 10.01 until 2 in the morning or whatever it was. And, and you're absolutely right. Um, to walk around here and think that whatever karma you, you put out there is not going to come back on you. Whenever things aren't going in, in my steed the way I want them to, I the first thing that comes to my mind is, yeah, I probably did that thing and it's just coming back on me right now. So I just got to get through this to the best of my ability and and, and just deal with it. But big ups to Cat Williams. He said this was the year of truth and people are being exposed and things are being exposed. How we think as a, a people, how we vote as a people, who we listen to as a people, all of this stuff is being exposed. And here we are today. So again, uh, the diddler, uh, RICO charges. My main question under these RICO charges as the... Um, Gov the governing prosecuting attorney said he could not do this by himself. Diddy went to Howard University. So he's an educated man. 
I agree. Under Rico, you can't do it by yourself. But I do know there's an illiterate man sitting in a jail in Chicago that was tried under, under Rico and nobody else was charged with them. I got questions. Yeah. So in closing, you know, everybody's got to pay the piper. Just make sure that um, what he's demanding of you is not going to cost you everything because it could. You know what I mean? And like I said, um, I feel sorry for Diddy. And I'm going to preface this by saying it's not that Oh, poor Diddy feel sorry for him that he didn't correct his ways uh, when he had a chance to do it. Um, unfortunately, sometimes when people get resources like a lot of money, uh, they think that's a pass to just do whatever they want to people. Um, and, you know, uh, this is probably another conversation, but I question his mom. I question his mom who did he, I think if you know anything about Diddy, he loves his mom dearly. She's like everything to him. Um, and he's got daughters, he's got sons. He's, he's just got a lot of people now that are unfortunately probably going to live without him for the rest of his life. Um, and he didn't even care enough about them to write the era of his ways. And so again, don't laugh, learn. So anyway, in the meantime, you all have a great rest of your afternoon. I will be back here at five. I think Donovan May, he, I know he's got some other stuff to do, but if you don't, it'll be me here to join you. I'm going to watch this press conference that's going to come on um, in a couple of minutes uh, with that of the National Association of Black Journalists. Uh, they're going to be interviewing Car uh, Ka I'm about to say Karma, hmm. Kamala Harris, um, as she did not uh, show up because she had other things to do, from what I understand, when uh, Donald Trump showed up uh, during their conference. So anyway, you guys be blessed. We'll see you all in a few. Peace.